All right. The polls are in. It's not over yet, but it's looking like Fate Zero is going to win at 6.3k votes and a 14% margin. We got some videos related to Fate that we can watch without being really spoiled. This is called The Origin of Tight Moon. Creators of Fate Stay Night, Skimi, and Kara no Kyokai from Chaya 4. Give it to me. Time and time again, the Tight Moon community has been blessed. Type Moon. Now, the only fate I know is from playing Fate Grand Order because Big Booby Girls and Gamba Gotcha. I skipped all the lore and stories because I just wanted the same quartz. I'm sorry. But Type Moon is basically the parent company, this entity that has their uh, ownership over different series like the Fate series. And like Kara no Kyoka, I think like Garden of Sinners. Isn't there like a Zero Shiki is from like a different things too? Or maybe that is Kara no Kyoka. I'm sure. But. Type Moon is like the overall parent umbrella group, right? By the same creators who made the Fate franchise. But how many people from this fandom really know the origins of how it all started? I don't what know is shit. up, guys? Today we're gonna be taking a look at some of the major events from Type Moon history. Now, first things first, you have to know the Arthur of the Fate series to begin yep. with is Nasu? Kinoko Nasu yep. and the man that helped bring his work to life a friend and a former classmate Takeuchi Takashi the oh. two of them met while they were is it author and artist that's really cool like a childhood friend bro that's actually that that's a straight up a fucking movie that this, this is an anime Uchi Takashi the two of them met while they were still in high school okay and they've been homies ever since now with Nasu being into writing and Take being into illustration, they uh. both dreamed of a way to get their talent noticed by the industry. Pour out anime girls. No, there's more to it than just that, right? Because every anime does that. But what makes Fate really stand out? So they took a chance. Around the time that they were in high school, they went to the convention known as Kamakit, which is the largest doujinshi con in the world. Is this where Itami Yoji was going in Gates? It kind of looks like it too. I just saw this. I'm like, yo, this looks like Gates. The Dojin festival shit. The term Dojinchi, meaning that the work is published independently. So see. Oh! See, when I see this word. Long time ago, when I was just a wee young lad. Looking for big booba girls because I'm watching animes, you know. There was this website called Dojin Mo. And that just <sighs> blew my mind, bro. And ever since that, the term Dojinshi, I just always associated with <laughs> H manga. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so whenever I saw these terms being thrown around, I was like, hmm, what does that really mean? But one more time, what does this mean? What does this mean? Term doujinshi, yeah. meaning that the work is published independently. Independent work, right? Every H manga is a doujinshi, but every doujinshi is not an H. Is that? It's a parent umbrella term. It's a super class doujinshi, right? Independent work, then you can have different subsets of that as well. So since it's pretty much a hot spot for amateurs to sell their work. Takeuchi went to this con with the intention of selling one of his novels. Okay. However, due to him having such a low number in sales, he lost a bit of his motivation. Wah, wah. What happened? I mean, not everyone can just pop off immediately, but I guess their career was not just an instant success immediately. They just bombed when they first went there. And ended up taking a step back from the industry. Fast forward and Takeuchi has now graduated from college. He goes on to work for the game company, Compile, who ultimately filed bankrupt and left womp, him womp. in a position where he had to find a new job. And thankfully, he was able to find a new spot in Tokyo. Now, during this time, Nasu was really into writing background stories for RPGs, but due to the sheer amount of Bro was just going around writing lore for existing games or work. No, working for video game companies where they're making RPGs and he was the main one making the plots. Detail that he would put in his work. Publishers would often turn him down simply because yeah. it was too long. So <laughs> it's too long. 
<laughs> My man needs to go fucking create visual novels. In 1998, Nasu and Takeuchi made the website Bamboo Broom as a Bamboo way to put Broom. out their own. Yeah, so Karana Kyokai is Garden of Sinners, and this is Zero Shiki, right? I remember playing the collab version, the collab event during FGO. Put out their own material instead of relying on someone else. And in the same year, Nasu published his very first novel on the site, Kara no Kyoka. Oh, that's their original product, huh? The first thing ever done was Kara no Kyokai, the Garden of Sinners. I don't know what what's about this girl, but she got this dagger and she's fucking OP. But and, and and then there's like um there's like there's a different version, right? There's like I think this one's Shiki, and then there's Zero Shiki, right? And in terms of power scaling, isn't Zero Shiki like way fucking stronger? Without having someone to give him decent coverage, people still hardly knew that his work was out there. So they decided, as a way to get better traction, <laughs> yeah, start whoring out Arthur, King Arthur. This is the Lancer variant of King Arthur on a horse, right? Their first game should be an Aroge, or more. <laughs> Damn. Humble beginnings, uh. In the beginning, they messed up. After graduating college, they got rejected because their shit's too long. They launched Kata no Kyokai, but it wasn't doing well enough. So what do they do? It's time to make some big booby girl Edo games, man. That's right. Specifically, a game that includes pornographic content. <laughs> and luckily for them, two of Take's friends from the company that went bankrupt yeah. just so happened to be a programmer and a musician imagine bro imagine you're all at the fucking company working together and one day the company goes bankrupt and y'all out of jobs and one dude is like gentlemen hear me out we are going to make pornographic visual novels and with this we will become fucking rich and everyone there was like you know what i am in god damn it this is an amazing fucking story. Dude, this should be a movie. You know how, like, Western films, like, idolize fucking, like, Mark Zuckerberg, like, the whole Facebook movie. Like, they made such a serious movie out of it. They should do this shit with Type Moon. The four of them linked up and started a Dojin group known as, you guessed it, Type Moon. There it is! But why Moon? Right? Type is, like, I don't know, like, a type of something, a type of an element, but... Why specifically Moon? The name Type Moon itself comes from a short novel that was written by Nasu. Okay. From that point on, the team started to work on the... It's just based off of a short novel he wrote before. Okay. Glorious project known as Tsubihime. What's that? Now when it I don't know this. I know Kara no Kyokai because that was an actual collab event I played during FGO. I know Fate Stay Night because that's the one the studio Dean had before was then got remade i'm not I, face day night is different from face day night unlimited blade works i think i'm not exactly sure how that works but tsukihime is something i'm not familiar at all came to nasu he was real laid back and despite the team also tsukihime means moon princess hime is princess ski is moon right back and despite the team looking at him as the head honcho he always listened to what his team had to say. Nice. In fact, a lot of times he was influenced by the things that they did. For example, when Takeuchi drew his characters, Nasu would form the personality of said character around their design. But every character has the same face. I swear to God, this is not just me memeing. Like, this is a fact. If you go look at the Saber face template, everyone has the base template. But it wasn't always easy. As I mentioned before, Takeuchi did all the drawing and coloring himself. Wow. I kid you not. This dude would ride to work on his bike, go back home on his lunch break, grind. work on Tsukihime, ride back to work, come back home, and work on Tsukihime again until 3 in the morning. Then repeat the process day by day. The grind is real out here god damn it mm -hmm. the same thing went for nasu but it's not a fruitless grind when you have a dream that you share with a bunch of friends and you see it start to get traction and be acknowledged by the world and have actual monetary gains from it you want to grind man you want to fucking do more it's not something you're forced to do 
It's a labor of passion. You actually want to do it, and it's so fulfilling. And, you know, you get what you get out of it. It's like, it's so nice to be able to, like, put in the amount of effort and be rewarded proportionately, rather than, you know, just, like, work is so hard, but the company just still pays you the same. Hey, the grind is real out here, goddammit. The same thing went for Nasu. And somewhere along this time, it got to the point where Nasu ended up leaving his day job. Oh, but shit. Takeuchi said, hold on, bro. I got you. I'll pay for your living expenses. What? I'll drop the bread. You Yo, the illustrator Take just he clutching hardcore right now. You work on Tsukihime. And Nasu did so accordingly, writing scripts for Tsukihime all what day, every day. After coming out with two prototypes, the official Tsukihime visual novel was released at Comicet in the year 2000. And what a release. The year 2000. Most of you fuckers weren't even born yet. At least it was, my guy. People were absolutely fascinated by the unique way that Nasu talked. Morning, Kohaku-san. Today is a lovely day. Yes, morning, Shihi-san. Kohaku-san delivers her ordinary morning greeting with a smile on her face. Like, there is something like, I don't know, like, the dialogue when I read this shit, it just feels mundane, yet so fresh and unique and immersive. As if you could feel that this person, this mate, is actually greeting you in real life due to the sheer amount of volume of dialogue and characterization. You know what I mean? Told his stories. Heading over to 2002, we have Type Moon collaborating with French Bread oh. to create Melty Blood. Melty which was Blood. a 2D fighter based on Tsuki. Oh! Melty Blood is a game, fighting game I do know. I've never played it, but I've seen other people. I've heard of it. And I'm like, it does look a lot like, you know, fake characters. But that's why. It's Tsukihime character ba battle game. Melty Blood which was a 2D fighter based on Tsukihime. Okay. It's also one of the greatest fighters to touch the face of this earth. Nasu, Melty Blood sequel win. What do I have to do? Anyway, the main point of releasing this title was to help with the promotion of Tsukihime. Yeah. And just as before, it had fans rushing in and out the arcade venue. In 2003, the time had... Fuck this company and everything it stands for. Kodansha, bro. <laughs> King's Records. Kodansha. Mulby. Eat my fucking ass. It finally come. Type Moon signed a contract with Kodansha Publishing and formed the company called Notes. And as of today, Notes is still the actual name of Type Moon's company. Okay. But they still carry Type Moon as the brand name due to it being a branch that operates under notes. Taking some advice from the people around them, Type Moon then decided to go commercial for their most notable Fate release Stay of Night. them all. Fate Stay Night. Aw, shit. Originally, it was something that Nasu started back when he was in high school. And since there was a lot of changes that he wanted to make before its release, these days, the old version is called Fate, Fate Prototype. Prototype. The planning was meticulous. Nasu wanted Fate Stay Night's release to correspond with the game itself. So since it took place in the winter, he wanted to drop the game in the winter as well. They even pushed okay. the game back six months just to make this happen. Five That's more dedicated than Mushoku Tensei Season 2 delaying one week to align that episode with Father's Day. Finally, the game was released in January 2004 and to no surprise, it, it blew off? the opposing sales out the Woo! water. 146,000 copies, making it one of the best-selling visual novels of his time. So, I don't know. He didn't give us a, a metric of how well Tsukihime did, but it seems like Tsukihime and then Melty Blood, and they're just still kind of waiting. And then Fate Stay Night is the thing that pushed things over the edge. This is like, not their magnum opus, but... The Fate series is their flagship product, right? Karo no Kiyokai, Tsukihime, and Fate had become yeah. the three staple pieces to putting their company in the door. It's funny how Karo no Kyokai, which was the first one that they made, has better poster animation compared to the other ones, obviously because this is like a reworked version of Karo no Kyokai, right? 
compared to Tsukihime and Fate Stay Night, which are the old versions. So, I wonder what the original Karana Kyokai, you know, illustrations looked like. Or they were then able to keep the rhythm going by allowing other creators to make official spin-offs, what? prequels, and so on. Other creators. Fate of Pop. So these aren't all written by Nasu? I thought that all the Fate shit was just Nasu writing. But other creators are borrowing the Fate IP and creating spin-off stories of it? Aww. So on. Each work began to pile on top of the next, and before you knew it, Type Moon was neck deep in their own content. What the and fuck? And since a lot of these titles made references to each other. Oh my god, look at this. Look at this shit. Karana Kyokai, Kagachi no Toya, Melty Blood Fighting Game, Karana Kyokai Fate Extra, Tsukihime 2. And this is just like the origins. And dude, the watch order for Fate is so fucking convoluted. They have some of the same <laughs> concepts. And yeah, and then this is where we're starting, right? We're going to start with Fate Zero, even though people say, No, Fate Stay Night first! Mechanics, the community nickname. All right, right, right over here, right? I, I think a lot of people, like chronologically, I, I'm not sure chronologically is the, is the right word, but... I don't care what you say. We voted in Fate Zero. We're gonna start with Fate Zero. I know a lot of people, a lot of sweaty fucking Type Moon enjoyers are saying Fate Zero is not the first series I should be watching. It should be the other ones. I don't care. I'm starting with Zero. Unity nicknamed the Type Moon universe as Nasu the Nasuverse. If you manage to dive into the Nasuverse from one of the big three, I highly recommend that you check out the other two. Chances are you might enjoy what you find. Especially Tsukihime. For the love of God, please read Tsukihime. Is that good? I need y'all to know about that shiki greatness, man. Okay, okay. But yeah, as you can see, Type Moon has came a long way. Uh, Berserker Girl. Four star Berserker Girl. And Mordred, who is the son of Arthur, has daddy issues, but they're both girls. Never understood how that worked. Don't worry about it. Hey. And although I couldn't find their net worth, it's safe to say a lot that of they're money. swimming in millions from getting their work turned down left and right to fake grand order pulling in an estimate of one billion in revenue. That's crazy. Don't let your dreams be means, people. If you enjoyed the video, throw your boy a like. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Looks like in the beginning, right? How did it all work out? Two friends in high school, Uchi and Nasu have a goal in mind and they tried to do their shit and sell it at Dojinshi Con, but it did bad because they didn't prep. And then they decided to work for a bit. Karana Kyokai came out, you know, Tsukihime came out. They start to, I, I think this is a big turning point. Whatever you say about Kumer content, right? Sex does sell and this definitely gave them that initial burst, right? <laughs> they hoard out their characters, got a bunch of money, right? Got a bunch of recognizations, then start to make, you know, amazing visual novels. Tsukihime was their melty blood. And then the real shit start to pop up with Fate Sting Night coming into the fray. They have prepared for a long time. They go in all prepared. It's not like a first time success, right? There's a lot of tries and fails and going in circles and figuring out what's going on but i think if anything it's it's this moment right <laughs> it's 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 the the, the arrow game moment that made this all think uh, possible so thank you to the coomers for letting the nasiverse bloom this is a video from mr saya4 please go give the channel a click go like this video if you did and I'll see you in future Fate content. If there's other Fate stuff that we can, you know, uh, react to without, you know, being spoiled for Fate Zero, let me know as well.